it's New Year's Day, so Happy New Year, everybody. And it's also New Bench Day. Uh, and today I'm going to look at building a kit. And um, it's uh, it's been a while since I built a kit. I look back in my videos and uh, this was the last kit I built. And uh, I think that was back in May 2016. And uh, actually, this might come in handy today. Um, but what we've got here is a dual power supply kit. Now I've had this in the kit box here in the shed for at least six months I would have suggest. Um, and uh, there's quite a few components in here and uh, quite a few of them are surface mount. Now I've not done a great deal of surface mount soldering recently so I took the opportunity uh, to grab one of these surface mount practice kits and I've uh, surface mounted uh, a SOP23, a SOP16, uh, a few resistors there just to give me a bit of practice and these are dead cheap, uh, only 99p, 99 cents and uh, hopefully that's put me in good stead to do this kit. So having a closer look at this PCB, we've got a mini USB and a barrel jack, 5.5, 2.1mm uh, barrel jack there on the input, because the input can be anywhere between 5 and 24 volts. But on the output, we've got plus 12 on ground and minus 12, uh, plus and minus 5 volts and a 3.3 volt rail as well. Now, I don't believe there's much current on these outputs if i remember correctly when i checked last night i think it's 300 milliamps per channel and these linear voltage regulators which are placed here the uh, 78m12 which is a surface mount version of the 7812 uh, there's the 7805 and then there's the 79m12 and that's a negative voltage regulator and the 79M05, and again, that's a negative voltage regulator. And then we've got an AMS 117 3.3 voltage regulator down here for the 3.3 rail. However, all of these regulators are powered from this XL6008 XL Semi uh, voltage regulator. Um, so let's look at the data sheet for that. Yeah, so this XL Semi XL6008 is, runs at 400 kilohertz, 60 volts, 3 amps, and it's a switching current boost, buck boost, inverting DC, DC converter. So uh, it ticks a lot of boxes there, doesn't it? And it's got a 3.6 volt to 32 volt input range, um, positive or negative output voltage programming with a single feedback pin, now further down the data sheet, we've got this SEPIC inverter uh, topology, and I think that's what they're using here, because remember the input can vary quite a lot from five volts to 24 volts, and they want the output to be consistent. So therefore, I think they're using this SEPIC, and we can see three inductors there, as we can on the PCB, one, two, three, although this looks like it's set up as if it were a transformer, and clearly we've got three separate inductors entirely. But this is the feedback pin on the XL6008, and there's a voltage divider here, and this output is at 12 volts, and it's using a 8.6K and a 1K resistor. Now if we look here, we've got this voltage divider here, and uh, it's going between a 1K resistor, the same as this, but a 12k resistor, so a higher value. So I'm expecting a higher voltage on the output of the XL6008. So usually the best course of action is to go for the lowest components first, the smallest, and uh, I'm going to do the surface mount, and here's the XL Semi 6008 regulator. And uh, let's just take it out of its little packet. And that fits up there. And hopefully, if I solder one of those pins, I'll be able to keep that nice and straight and looking nice and neat. 
Okay, next I want to do these diodes, and I think they're probably shock diodes. Um, and if I get them out of the packet, and there's one, I'm going to use my transistor tester and see what these diodes are like. So if I hold this diode the right way up, between those two pads there. Yeah, diode forward voltage 233 millivolts apparently. So the two shocky diodes are installed there and I found these reverse tweezers very useful for holding onto them. Um, obviously they get a bit warm, you don't want them getting too warm though while you're soldering. Now we need to move on to the linear voltage regulators and they're all in these little packets and that's a 79M12. That's kind of in the middle. So the 79M12 goes here with a little bit of solder on the end of my iron. There we go, that's in place that one there's that one and then finally the tab get the iron on both surfaces doesn't seem to want to wick there we go just needed a bit of time and uh, I think that'll do now obviously you need to be aware of where you're putting your components in every case but it wouldn't take much would it to get the 79 mo 5 and the 78 mo 5 the wrong way around so uh yep yeah, that's definitely the 79 there so what i've noticed here is the output of the xl 6008 the positive output goes into the uh, 7812 uh, uh, linear regulator and it comes down here also down to the 7805 regulator but then the output of the 75, uh, 7805 regulator goes on to the input of the 3.3 regulator so it's not being driven by those higher voltages it's only being driven by 5 volts from this regulator so this 5 volt regulator here has got almost twice the amount of work to do now the last surface mount components are the three inductors all 33 microhenries is that 33 and a zero to say no multiplier so i'm going to put a bit of solder on one side of each oh i've got a bug on the circuit board well, find yourself somewhere else to be, bug. Now, of course, this would be far easier if I had solder paste and uh, a heat gun. But I have neither of those, so I'm having to make do. But that looks like I've got a reasonable connection there. So that's all these surface mount components uh, installed now. So everything else is through hole. So I'll start with the smallest um height which is the resistors and there's three different types here three of one and one each of the others and uh being in the fact that there's 1k there a 1k there and another 1k there brown black black uh 1k resistors i'll start with those okay next we've got this one uh what's that red black brown um I don't know what that is. Let me plug that in there. Testing 2192, 2.2K. So that fits uh, just there. In here. Which means the last one must be the 12K for the voltage divider, which goes along there. Now I'm going to go for the LEDs next, and uh, I've got a chance now to use this LED tester, which I've never used before. 
and uh, it's got a load of pinholes at the top and you are able to supply varying different amount of current to your LED so let's start at the very bottom there 2 milliamps turn it on I got a good connection there we go 2 milliamps across that LED and uh, I wonder are they all red LEDs and would it make any difference can I put them all in at the same time so we've got 2, 5 and 10 milliamps just got to make sure you've got a decent connection oh hmm perhaps this isn't as useful as I hoped it would be There we go, three LEDs, slightly different brightnesses, two milliamps, five milliamps, and 10 milliamps. And the silk screen has the flat spot there on the diagram for the flat spot on the LED, so we know exactly which way round we're going. So that one's gonna go in that way round. And next I think it'll be these capacitors uh, ceramic all marked 104 and there's one two three four five down there in a line and one up there and one there so half a dozen of these to put in um, don't need to worry about polarity for these so I think I'll do the mini USB connector next before doing the uh, resettable fuse the poly fuse which goes up there so it might get in the way so I'll do the uh, USB connector. It has to be said this PCB is quite thick and that does mean that the pins of that USB connector barely come through the through hole vias here. Um, but I think I should just be able to solder and of course I only need to do positive and negative, the three in the middle, the two data and what is the fifth one on the uh, micro USB, mini USB sorry. And then the four connections here to actually hold the socket on the board. So I've gone ahead there and put the polyfuse in, the uh, U300 and uh, that micro USB is nicely on there too. Uh, so I'm going to move on to the electrolytics and of course we need to make sure we get the polarity correct. Um, this is a 22 microfarad 50 volts so uh, it's quite high rated there because this input only goes up to 24 volts. 22 UF that one goes in there and it's clearly marked on the silk screen which side is positive and which sides are negative which is excellent so I'm going to try the third hand technique here may not go well oh I seem to get away with that so I've installed the barrel jack there and I've got some pin header to put in on the outputs um, and I am going to install them because I'm building this power supply because I have something on its way that needs positive and negative voltage rails. So I'm going to make sure they're in and I'll put the other connectors in as well. So that's it. The build is complete. The only thing I've got left to do is stick on these heat sinks. Um, but I'm not going to bother initially. Uh, we'll see how warm they get. It's certainly cold enough here in the shed today. Uh, I can't imagine them getting too hot straight away. So now the build is complete. There's a few things to check. Is the input and output isolated? I don't think they will be. No, they're not. And of course now we need to look at the voltages. So if I fix the range there and get 12.7 volts from my solar battery bank here. We've got three LEDs illuminated and uh, yeah, plus 12.2 volts, minus 11.8 volts, just over 5 volts, 4.96, negative 4.96 and 3.3 volts. Okay, so they're all pretty good. And the last thing I want to know is, the XL6008 must be boosting that voltage to have it regulated again back down to 12 volts. So like I mentioned, 12.7 volts on the input, but what's the output of the SEPIC converter? 
Well, it's 16.14 volts, and I'm probing the input of the 12 volt regulator there. And actually, I can probably find the negative, yep, yeah, minus 16 volts there on the negative voltage regulator. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video of the kit build of the USB Boost Linear Regulator Module. Pull down the description for links to all the items used in today's video. If you did enjoy it, why not give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.